Welcome to Anthony's Hobby Corner. Um, today's video is catered towards beginners looking to get into the world of model trains and the hobby of model railroading. Um, and today, um, this video will focus on a very common question uh, that has been posed by many beginners as to which scale they should choose. Uh, if they want to get into the hobby. The uh, most common entry point that I have observed uh, that get people in, interested into the hobby is when they happen to attend a, a model train show along with a friend uh, or a model exhibition, a model train exhibition, uh, and they get exposed to all these beautiful uh, layouts and all the nice locomotives and uh, concerts running around the layout. Uh, with all those uh, locomotives and passenger cars and freight cars all for sale etc it really gets people enticed to having their own layout and getting into the hobby now there are obviously uh, a few things that goes through a person's mind when they first encounter this is that number one you know, how much is going to cost me is this going to be an expensive hobby to get into um, secondly, how much space is this going to consume and do I have that space available uh, based on my living, uh, living scenario? And uh, what's the availability of, of these models and rolling stock and locomotives in my local demographic? Is this something I have I can get easy access to? Uh, is this something I'm going to have to rely on uh, getting stock from uh, through eBay, etc., etc.? And is there really a used market available where I can also get some used uh, rolling stock and equipment um, within the hobby as well? So these are some of the most common uh, thoughts that go through people's minds when they're looking to get into the hobby. When one is at the, the point where you are serious about getting into model trains, the next question you're going to be asking yourself is, you know, what scale am I going to pick uh, that I'm going to model? And this is where the dilemma comes into play, where most people, you know, do get confused and, and sometimes make the wrong decision, uh, which ends up making it a very unpleasant experience later on because you invested in a scale that's not suitable, uh, suitable for you. So what I've done here is actually I've listed um, all the common scales that are uh, modeled uh, t today, uh, you know, in model trains. Um, there are about 13 scales that you can see here uh, listed from T scale being the, the most smallest at a ratio of 1 to 450. So, you know, the model is 450 times smaller than the real thing. Uh, and scaling all the way up to the largest scale, uh, which is G scale, also otherwise known as garden scale. Um, that is typically used for um, model trains uh, to be to be modeled uh, and built outdoors. So really, there's a good spectrum here. And um, so, for the interest of the audience of this particular video, which is primarily catered for beginners looking to get into model trains, I'm going to focus really on the three most common scales out there, and then we can take that discussion from there. Uh, obviously, there are some folks, if you're looking to build a model layout uh, in your garden, uh, then it's a no-brainer. You're going to go with G-Scale, which is what's primarily meant for outdoors. Um, but other than that, you know, if you're looking to model, uh, create a layout indoors inside, uh, in, inside your home, obviously, we'll have many options. And it's absolute imperative that you, that you select the right scale for your environment point we are going to focus on the three specific scales that I mentioned before again is because they're the most popular and it also gives you a fairly good range between a larger scale and something very small that you can also use in very confined spaces um, in this in the slide here you'll see uh, two two different metrics one being the scale ratio which is in within the, the yellow numeric within the black bar and the other is the distance between the rail, which is known as the gauge. So in, in O scale, uh, the distance between the rails is one and quarter inch. 
uh, for H O scale, which is supposed to be half of O scale, it's uh, roughly five eighths of an inch between the rails, and N scale, the, the the gauge of the distance between the rails is about three three eight inches. So we're going to focus on these three uh, scales for now, uh, and we will take the discussion from there further, uh, and we'll further analyze the the pros and cons of each of these scales uh, based on. Uh, uh, cost, space, availability, etc. Okay, so in summary, let's take a practical look at this scenario. I've created a slide here that kind of shows a, a practical view on how we can interpolate uh, the whole discussion in scale, on scales into something that's a bit more visual and, uh, and uh, optical from that standpoint. So if we were to look at uh, the three scales that we were talking about previously, uh, that being N scale, HO scale, and O scale. And we start to compare real life in comparison to those three scales. If you have, let's say for example, you have a tree that's, you're trying to model a tree that's about seven feet in height. Well, in HO scale, a seven foot tree would be represented in one inch or a seven foot span of, of, of a model be it a, a building or a locomotive uh, will be will be uh, represented in one inch in, on your HO layout so that gives you an idea as to how much space you would need uh, for a layout uh, of a size that you're planning to put in place now the same if you were to use the same comparisons uh, if you were to model in N scale, for example, which is really half the size of HO, then that also implies that you can model a 14 foot tree or a 14 foot building or uh, something of 14 feet in one inch. And so as you can see now, there are some great benefits from going to N scale from that standpoint. If you are limited in space, then you can really model a larger area uh, in N scale in a much more practical, smaller, smaller, uh, smaller uh, confines. And of course, the inverse goes for O scale. Four feet in real life, be it a four foot tree or a four foot span of a building, will be represented in one inch in O scale. So again, as you can see, uh, O scale would require a lot more space to represent that same real estate that you are representing with HO or with N. Okay, so what I would suggest is that you perhaps put this video on pause for a second if you want to grasp more information from this slide. I have embedded a table uh, that kind of shows the comparison between the different scales uh, and uh, how much real estate uh, that would represent in real life for each inch of, of, of real estate on, on, uh, on, the mo on your model. Uh, and so you can see increments from one inch all the way up to nine inches on, on the left hand side. And you can see how much that would actually represent in real life based on each scale. So this hopefully was a little bit helpful to you to figure out uh, what kind of scale you should pick based on the amount of available space that you have for modeling. Okay, so we've talked about scales, we've talked about the ratios, we've also talked about the practical representation of uh, each of those scales and how much real estate it would actually consume, etc. So now let's take a look at a visual representation uh, that would kind of give you a good overview on what would be a good scale for you based on some of the key criteria that we should be looking at with regards to selecting a scale to model. So what I have captured here are some of the key criteria that I personally had to consider when selecting uh, a scale that I was going to model uh, for my for, for model cranes. Um, again, I want to put this uh, qualifier out there that what you're seeing here really is my own interpretation and my own personal opinion. It is not by any means representative of the general populace of model railroaders, nor is it representative of any kind of governing body. It's just my own representation and my observations uh, that I've made um, as, I, as I spend many years in, in the hobby. 
So let's talk about each of the scales here one by one and the criteria that I've actually uh, uh, ranked them against. Um, so let, if you look at N scale, starting with the, the smallest scale out of the three that we've selected, uh, if you look at space requirements, N scale obviously is the most favorable for small spaces because it by all means is the smallest out of the three scales that we have selected and therefore it does uh, let you uh, model far more real estate in a small confined space. When we look at ease of service and cleaning, this is where I believe N scale is the least favorable out of the three scales we have picked, because again, uh, for their attributed to the nature of being the smallest out of the three, um, it's, it's much harder, obviously, to, to clean and service those locomotives in comparison to an HO or O scale locomotive. Uh, you've got far more delicate parts inside, the gear wheels are smaller, the motors are smaller, and usually those locomotives are jam-packed with uh, electronics and uh, weights to keep give you add traction uh, amongst the motor um, and the wiring. So it's a little bit uh, harder to get into and clean from that standpoint. Again, it's just a comparison between the other two. When we look at the availability of N-scale locomotives and rolling stock, um, they are fairly available, but not as available uh, or readily available uh, as HO scale um, um, locomotives and rolling stock. Um, if you look at uh, you know a local demographic, you will find that most hobby stores, if they do carry you know model trains and other hobby hobby categories like radio control, uh, car, aircraft and boats and cars, etc., you'll find that they will all have um, some HO, uh, but very little N to begin with, and some of them don't even carry N scale. But the dedicated model train stores will carry a decent amount of N scale. But again, HO really is the most popular from that standpoint. All right, so if you look at the, the next category of selection and variety, I believe that I would rank it the same as availability in the sense that, you know, all these hobby stores, uh, the ones that perhaps carry model trains and other hobby categories, or even the dedicated model train stores, uh, they all seem to have more HO variety than N scale. And maybe that's just perhaps attributed to the fact that HO is more popular uh, amongst maybe even uh, the kids as well as uh, professional hobbyists. But either way, um, a personal observation is that I've seen uh, less of a variety available at the hobby stores in comparison to uh, HO. Now, when we look at pre-owned items, this is where I think uh, the playing field gets a bit more level between HO and N. I've been to many train shows and exhibitions, and I've seen that there seems to be almost uh, equal amount of uh, vendors, uh, you know, ha having HO and N scale items for sale. There may be a little bit disparity here and there, but overall, if you net things out, I think uh, I would perhaps call it fairly even. Um, so if you're looking for used and pre-owned items, both N scale and HO scale seem to have equal popularity and you have many options to pick from, uh, from used items from that standpoint. All right, so looking at the next category of adding aftermarket mods like DCC, DCC soundboards, uh, lighting, etc., constant lighting, etc., and this is where, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, N-Scale is the least favorable, again, because of its small form factor. Um, if you open up a, a modern N-Scale locomotive or even some of the older N-Scale locomotives, uh, you will see that there is very limited space in there to add um, a lighting module or a DCC sound module and a speaker sometimes. You really have to get, uh, you know, very, very uh, micro or miniature uh, sound boards, etc., uh, and really find be creative ways to uh, find creative ways to um, to incorporate those into a locomotive. 
uh, whereas in HO you have uh, you know, far more space to do that and obviously in O-Scale even more space to add, um, add any kind of accessories into your locomotive. Uh, and so therefore I would rank uh, N-Scale the least favorable from that standpoint. Looking at resilience and durability, uh, again, I would uh, say the least favorable between uh, the three scales that we're talking about here. Uh, again, as a friendly reminder that this is just a comparison between the three scales. It's uh, and I'm using the other two scales as a benchmark. Uh, from a resilience and durability standpoint, again, because the small form factor and the minute details, um, it, it's it's uh, uh, they're a bit more delicate than HO, uh, and obviously far more delicate than O scale. Uh, and so you can easily break some of the finer details, uh, the, the railings, etc., in trying to hold your locomotive. Um, and even servicing them makes it a little bit more tougher as well. And of course, ease to work with. Uh, I would say the same applies. It's least favorable. Uh, again, attributed to the fact that it's the smallest scale out of the three. Um, uh, poses some some challenges with, with regards to handling and e even the fact that when you're building your layout you have to be even more critical with your angles and your track laying and etc because uh, the, them being smaller they are uh, far more impacted by imperfections okay so let's switch over to HO scale now and I'm not going to spend as much time as I spent on on the first category of N scale uh, because I think you kind of get the gist and the idea of how we go through the comparison here. Uh, but in HO scale, obviously, from a space standpoint, it requires a more space, double the space than N scale. So therefore, you need to make sure that you have uh, some decent um, uh, space available for you in your basement or garage or attic or wherever, uh, where you can have a decent sized layout. Um, keeping in mind that you can get double the layout if you go to end scale but of course it comes with its own own uh, pros and cons um, so from that standpoint i did i did uh, rank eight show scale as uh, in between least and and most favorable uh, because obviously it's not as favorable as n scale is looking at ease of service uh, i would say ho scale and o scale are pretty much ranked the same they are much easier to work with. Um, they have more space. They are twice as large as N scale. Uh, the motors are larger and robust. The gearing is more larger and robust as well. And so it's a bit more um, user friendly for even attempting to do your own servicing, etc., on the locomotives. Availability and selection, I'm going to rank them both the same as being the most favorable. Uh, pretty much every hobby store will have HO rolling stock and locomotives uh, and also they have the highest variety uh, of uh, selection available at uh, general hobby stores or uh, model train specific hobby stores. Um, adding aftermarket uh, mods again is far easier than working with uh, N-Scale. Um, I used to have N-Scale and I switched over to HO uh, for those very reasons. Um, and I found that it's much easier to add DCC modules and, and uh, constant lighting circuits, etc. because there is far more real estate available inside the locomotive or, or, the, or your passenger cars, etc. Uh, to accommodate such mods. Uh, and also they're much easier to work with. Uh, with com when it comes to resilience uh, and durability, uh, HO scale is fairly resilient, but obviously in no comparison to O scale, as O scale is larger and built tougher. Uh, but uh, I would say it falls in between, uh, in between N and O scale from that standpoint. Easy to, easy to work with, uh, I think um, in my opinion, it ranks the same as O scale. Uh, again, because of its popularity, they're built much easier. They're built easier to, to service and open up. Um, and they're not as hard to work with from that standpoint. And from a cost standpoint as well, I believe it is the most uh, cost, cost uh, efficient and um, most affordable uh, in comparison to N scale and O scale. N scale, I would say, is a marginally a bit more expensive, um, but uh, not that much more. It's just perhaps marginal. Um, and uh, but again, I would uh, because the availability and options uh, and options with regards to um, the different models available, I would kind of rank HO to be the most cost effective from that standpoint. Especially because you also have a lot available in the used to market. Okay, so let's go over to O scale now. 
And so going through each of the categories for O scale, if we look at uh, space requirements, O scale obviously because of its size is the least favorable when it comes to three, the three scales. It requires twice as much space as HO and perhaps four times as much space as N scale. So obviously, if you're going to be looking at O scale, it would be it would be prudent to make sure that you have a fairly large, dedicated area uh, to be able to build a layout for O scale because you're going to be consuming a good chunk of that. Uh, also, it adds some additional complexities where with O scale you will be looking at three rail most of the time, uh, and so that does uh, bring another another complexity in there in the sense that you know aesthetically, do you find three rail to be uh, acceptable, you find that something to, that, that you find appealing, uh, or would you prefer to stick with two rail? When it comes to ease of service uh, and cleaning, etc., you know, again, old scale, I would say, ranks the same as HO. They're very easy to work with, uh, they're larger, uh, they're built tougher uh, because they have larger parts now, uh, and they're very easy to service and clean uh, and keep going from that standpoint. Um, availability and selection and variety and we'll tackle both of those together as well um, i believe they're the least favorable um, most most hobby stores that you go to uh, general hobby stores uh, don't even carry o scale they will they, they will carry ho perhaps some n scale but that's pretty much it um, that's at least my based on my observation um, if you go to dedicated uh, locomotive model train hobby stores uh, they will carry O scale as well, uh, but again, uh, in no comparison to a show from that standpoint. Um, when you look at pre owned items, I think the same applies. I've been to many exhibitions and model trains uh, shows, uh, and I've found that they do carry O scale, uh, but again, not as much uh, in comparison to a show. Um, and so you're going to have to uh, plan things out appropriately. You may have to be forced to buy more new uh, merchandise from that standpoint as opposed to looking at the used market. Uh, it does exist, but again, not as not as freely available as HO. When it comes to adding aftermarket mods, again, I would rank it the same as HO. They're very easy to work with. You have lots of space in there inside your locomotives uh, to add uh, various electronics components, uh, DCC modules, etc. So um, that's really a no issue there from that standpoint. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, it's a three rail system primarily. So that's something that not everyone uh, defines appealing. And it's something you need to consider right from the beginning before you decide to go down that path. Resilience and durability. Uh, of course, uh, I would rank O scale uh, the most favorable. Uh, they are built uh, very tough. Uh, again, the, everything is you know double the size of HO, so you have uh, you know far more durable product uh, to to work with. Um, and again, easy to work with, you know, self-self self, uh, self-explanatory there. Um, again, the most favorable, and I would I would rank it the same as HO from that standpoint. Now, when we talk about cost, I would I would say that O scale is the most expensive compared to the three scales we're looking at here. Uh, again, because we're looking at more material. Uh, um, more more product that has to be manufactured uh, and your molds are much larger uh, much more plastic consumption etc um, etc et and so um, O scale generally tends to be more expensive from that standpoint um, but that's again it comes to personal preference it's something that are you willing to uh, willing to uh, absorb from that standpoint um, so if you were to compare all three scales now, if you look at them from a visual here, you'll see that uh, there is a reason why HO scale has been the most adopted scale uh, globally. Um, it Again, because in most of these criteria, it happens to be the most favorable uh, in comparison to N and O scale. But, but that by no means means that the other two scales are not, uh, are not great scales. They are, again, uh, they, are, they all cater to very specific um, needs uh, that people have. Uh, and uh, those who have the luxury of large um, dedicated spaces uh, would love to go with O-scale. 
and those who lived in very confined spaces and who still want to engage in the hobby will will stick to n scale uh, and of course majority i've seen um, tend to gravitate towards a show because it's really a compromise between both now there are two more uh, minor points i want to bring up here that i didn't mention in these charts because I wanted to keep things simple, uh, especially because my expectation is that this this slides are meant for beginners getting into the hobby. Uh, but there are two things I want to share with you that I think uh, will be somewhat relevant because you would definitely come across them when you start looking at different scales. Well, in in Europe and I would say primarily in the UK, you would see people modeling in in double O scale, and that basically is very similar to HO. It's just a difference. Uh, they use the same track, uh, but the the uh, the rolling stock and locomotives are modeled to a slightly larger scale of one to seventy six. So uh, that's the only variance. Uh, but the track gauge is, is the same. So if you if you do see something that says double O, you can you can for all intents and purposes you can kind of equate it to close to H O uh, when it comes to picking a scale. Uh, the second item is that you will see certain brands like Merklin uh, that also makes three rail HO uh, locomotives and rolling stock. And that's a complete different system to the two rail system. Uh, it runs on AC uh, and it's, it's not compatible with your other two rail HO systems out there. So that's again another conscious decision that you will have to make. Um, and it's something that uh, if you go down that path, you are stuck with that and you can basically expand uh, your, lo your, your locomotives and rolling stock um, with Merklin and a few other manufacturers that make three rail systems. Um, but I want to make sure you are well aware that those systems are not compatible uh, with your other two rail HO systems made by all the other manufacturers. Okay, so for for any beginners out there and newbies getting into the hobby, uh, I hope you found this little segment useful. Um, at least it gives you a rough comparison uh, of the most practical criteria that one would actually consider when getting into the hobby. Uh, and uh, again, as I mentioned before, this is my personal experience and representation of what I have experienced in the hobby. And uh, I'm just looking to share with all of you so that uh, you can perhaps make uh, a more sound decision uh, once you choose to get into this hobby. It's a wonderful, wonderful hobby to get into, um, it, and it lets you uh, lets you engage in the hobby no matter what season you are uh, in the year. Um, and uh, it's also imperative that, imperative that you actually pick the right scale so that you can really have many, many years of enjoyment uh, from therein. So thanks again for for watching this video, and I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please, please post them in the comments section. and I'll be more than glad to uh, assist from that standpoint. Have a good day.